Hi everybody, I'm Steve Scott, and in today's show I want to analyze a throw that you're seeing more and more often in both Judo and Sambo uh, because of the excellent defensive skills uh, that we're seeing in, in these sports these days. And this, the throw I'm just talking about is the outside spinning throw, or the, uh, the moving on the spinning outside the body mass of your opponent rather than the traditional way of stepping inside and throwing them over your, your back or your shoulder, your hip, whatever it may be. Uh, you're seeing these throws more and more often, and they're working quite well because tactically it's, it's a great idea. Uh, and, and they've developed because primarily, at least in my opinion, of the uh, very good uh, hip block, hip, hip cut, uh, blocking type movement where um, you, you know the, the when the, the defender it completely shuts down and, and stops his opponent's attack by using his hip block and cutting away in a kind of a quick turning fast Taisabaki hip action type movement it's sitting rather than the, than the hop around or the avoidance it is actually stopping the throw dead in its tracks and and so this has been uh, this was happening for, for quite some time and we're seeing uh, has, these throws have evolved over time these spinning on the outside and attacking. So I'm going to take a look at these today, and then and and I've kind of focused it on on two primary tools or handles that the attacker will use when throwing his opponent. The first one is the lapel, and using the lapel and and then spinning to the outside. So by controlling lapel, he controls his opponent's shoulder significantly and and is able to manipulate that and turn on the outside. And the second handle uh, is the the opponent's sleeve or the arm. Okay, the extended sleeve, the, the, the jacket, or even, even the arm, hooking the arm. So there are two primary handles, as it were, that, that at least I'm seeing in the uh, application of this outside spinning throw. Uh, so first we're going to cover the, uh, the, the, the var variation with the using the lapel, the ERI, -E the, the lapel, the controlling the shoulder. In the second part of the video, we're going to look at the uh, use controlling with the, uh, the sleeves and the, the arms. Now again, we do a lot of Sambo, and so you're going to see some of this from our Sambo perspective as well as a Judo perspective. But in all cases, uh, we're trying to uh, show these techniques so that they can be used both in the, the current rules of the International Judo Federation and, of course, in the Freestyle Judo and AAU Judo where we can grab the legs. You're going to see some of this. This will come into play. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And also how we use them in Sambo. So anyway, uh, let's take a look now at the outside spinning throwing techniques. arm away and it pops it free like oh I lost his arm. Well I can still save this throw. And so when he went in, I can, as long as I keep coming in and I can spin and turn and he gets a lot lower than me and a lot better than me. So I'll have to do it on, on Eric. And so, so watch out when, when when Eric or Derek comes in, he comes in and there he just catches a spin. Yeah. Keep that arm in. Don't stick your arm out because it will get broken. Okay? So so he comes in with that, that lapel style Sanagi and he turns away and he catches it. And watch what he does, he, he just keeps rotating through that, that deep canary style spin. When he comes in here and he, keep, and he looks the other way and he just whips. Now, if like in the IJF tournaments where you can't touch the lower, you know, the lower extremities, you can just keep turning and just, you know, windmill. Like that. So you don't really necessarily have to. Or you could also and grab that leg. There, bam. See that? So you know, if you were like in AAU judo or you know, sambo, well, yeah, you could be out the leg and not pants. But let's look at that again. When he comes in and you know, just going, when he comes in, he just swings it all the way, and he just may turn. The, the guy may cut away and turn away. This is what it's used for. And now what Derek does, he keeps rotating through, and he just. There's the window. And in a real tournament, you probably you may end up landing on the guy, but that's a nice clean finish. That's a really nice clean finish. You know, if I get a cross grip, we're fighting here and I can get a cross grip, and I can sneak this in here, okay? And he's not expecting a Selenagi from this position. And what's going to happen, I'm going to come on and do the same thing as Derek just did. I'll come on the same side here and get the same whipping motion. So, um, 
So he's, he's got, he's got instead of his far lapel, he's got the near lapel. And he's got two on one here. Now he'll let go with his hand as he comes in. And he'll swing under and go. Okay? So try to, you may have to land on him. So I'm sorry. That's why we got to crash on the track here. Just take that, yeah, just take that off. There, see how that goes? So it's really a tight, solid grip. And again, it's, it, nobody expects that from this angle. It's, it's, a, it's a, you do it as a knee drop either, but the standard version is a good clean version. One more time, let's do it slow and just pick him up. So when you see he comes in, so he grabs. Now, he held on that last time, which was great. If you could do that, fabulous, do that, because you've got both, you know, so upper body under control. But if he does pull it away, you might have to let go. So this time, let go and just have it in hand. Yeah. And it's coming to spin. See that? And you can throw him just by just rolling over. There you go. So that's a real fast, it's a real fast spinning under. Okay, so we're gonna do basically the same thing off of our lapel grip, okay? You gotta get your, your form on the guy so that he's moving for you, okay? So move through, catch, and see how he's now across my belt line, okay? So you've got the inside grip, your right hand is on his left lapel. Right. Okay. Okay, so as we're through here, okay, I'm gonna take my step across, move him, and catch immediately as I step in. There's more of a thump to it, but you are really like bending them across your, your back because um, you've got tighter grips. Okay, whereas with the arm, you know, I have to really work hard to get it pretty tight. Some, most of the time when you do it fast, he's a little bit looser. You really don't have that, that option when you've got the lapel. And if you do it right and your elbow is still in there, He's right there. So that elbow kind of helps jack up his uh, left yep. arm in the armpit area. Yep, and then big deep grip on his thigh, and I'm going to look behind me. Lean in. If it's going to work for a uh, Morote, it's going to work here. Okay, because the same principles there. I just need to get his shoulders moving so that I can catch a hold of that. So okay. if you prefer the curl and Morote style grip, go for it. It's going to work just as well. I mean, honestly, if I didn't grab his leg, it would be a, pretty much the same exact entry as Serge from Higoshi. You know, you're jacking him up high, you're kicking your hip across, you know. You're but you're just coming out. outside his arm instead of inside right. the mass of the body, right. inside, inside of his grip, yeah. Right. Could you show one more time your grip, that setup, that right hand is there, okay. and that's the, that's the standard setup pretty much. Okay. But okay. instead of coming in across, like a, like a, coming to like a standard uh, hip throw, there, instead of coming in there, you're coming into the outside of his body. You're spinning outward. Yeah, it's just a super, super tight circle. So through here, catch him in the armpit, rotate around. Okay? Don't get caught up with trying to go way across over here and then kick in. I mean, you can get it if you're really fast at foot, but make it easy on yourself. Come through just inside his foot, rotate through, catch, turn. Set that up. So, so Eric, you're grabbing Derek's with the left arm, and you spin under, spin to your left, keep spinning all the way around, grab, and roll over. Okay. Now, some people do that without grabbing the leg, as we discussed earlier, and maybe that's legal for maybe IJF style tournaments. But I like the leg grab better, and you, you almost grabbed his hip, didn't you, behind him? Yeah. Which is totally okay uh, because those work. But it's kind of a, re a reverse spin. Come under. Grab and spin over like that. Hit it on an offside instead of our normal wrapping around mechanism, which is to turn towards the direction of your dominant hand. So this one we're actually going to turn away from the dominant hand. Yeah, we basically an odd side, I guess, yeah. would be the good way to describe it. Right. So I'm going to wind my way through and then take a roll. And I'm going to use the, the driving force of the arm and wrapping his leg. So I'll have this arm, that leg and then roll right over.
right through here. I'm going to break his grip because a lot of times when this happens, if he has a hold of that, when we roll over it, pulls his wrist down and hurts his wrist. So I'm going to break that free. Okay. I'm just going to shoot this across as I come through into my Seonagi motion and wrap his leg. Okay. And then from here, we're just going to take a either a direct look back behind us at the wall or a shoulder roll, whichever way you want to think about it. Tuck and roll. As soon as you get that leg, go for it. Now, for some of you guys that do the IJF rules, instead of touching the leg, you can, and Derek does this kind of as your preference, really, you grab around the waist when you, when you wrap it. So why don't you show that one? Okay. So we're going to come around here like this and just say, no, you can catch around back. You can almost try and catch his belt if you need to. Same, same exact thing. I'm just trying to block him from slipping off on that near side. Punch, step in Sanagi style, wrap around his waist, and then roll. And guys, be sure you roll. You don't want to do a head dive. It's really almost like a shoulder roll right. in the air. Right. And so as I push through there, if I keep looking at that part of the, the wall, you know, I'm going to come right through. And if I just rolled over, he's on my back, so he lands first. One more time here. Catch. Run us through it, and there you finish it. So you're doing the the, the, the twisting throwing technique, and you add that at the very last second. You don't make it a big move at first. We were talking about this. Like the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae. Yes, it's the cherry that, that that adds a little flavor. In this case, adds a little more power into the throw too. Right, and you'll notice when he comes over, I'm rolling on top of him, not on top of myself. Correct. So you haven't initiated this. This isn't like a classic uh, Uchimata attack. No, I'm not like you're coming. Yeah, you're not coming in that leg first. You, you, you're spinning in. And like like the spinning throw, okay, the, the twisting throw, and at the very last second when you're grabbing the leg and you come in, add that uchimata. There you go. But there you add the uchimata with it. It's almost so it's that twisting throw we've been doing earlier tonight, and now we're just adding. There you go. You can see how the uchimata addition, that inner thigh, is coming across there. Now that is. Uh, that's an Uchimata from hell. And that could even salvage it if, if he kind of cuts and ties the bag out of it or so on. Right. That movement, that extra, at the very last second, that thigh sweep catches it and adds, adds to a it. more element of power, actually, a little right. more ballistic effort into it. So, right. Yeah, so keep, keep doing it a few times. Just have fun and I'll video so everybody can see here. And it's your right leg that's sweeping. And you're the right leg, just this classic Uchimata type thing in that case at the very last second. So, uh, but notice how he's left arm spin under, grab his right arm, and Uchimata. So Derek's going to attack Jacob's, this arm here, okay? And you're going to see him do it, so you want to coach it through it while he's doing it? Okay, so. okay, so a lot of times I'll teach this off of like if somebody grabs you, you can grab a, a short drag and go to the side. But it works just as easily if, if he has a grip or if I do a grip pop and I go for an arm drag. Okay, so I start dragging around to get to here, he moves his hips a little bit. Okay, I still have his elbow, so what we do is we hug around the lower part of the arm again, come in on your knees and look behind you. Through. Now, did you see how he threw? He kept rotating and rolling through, and Jacob came kind of on the odd side back out. So he doesn't fall normally like you would in a knee drop Sayanagi. 
Yeah, some of you are looking quizzical. Let's look at it again, okay? Let's look at that roll. So that's where people start getting kind of hung up in how this guy should fall. So let's kind of, kind of take a look at it. This way so you can kind of see which way I'm looking. As I come through, it's basically a full rotation, okay? You get the arm drag, we come through here, and then as I slide in sideways, I'm going to keep looking back that way and keep pulling that arm drag, okay? All the way around. So basically, we're going to come down and get our, our hips in between uh, his legs, like in between his knees if you can. And when you straighten up, and look behind you. Okay. Coming in, that style of Sayanagi, what we call the odd side Sayanagi, it, it has to have a deep hip action to make it work. And this works even better because you shoot that, in this case, your left leg, I believe, yes. uh, deep between Eric's right. legs, feet. Right. Let's, let's see that again. We'll get, get a bit of an angle here. Okay, so we're just going to come through. We're going to take a deep back step. Okay. Let's look at the uh, upper body that okay. you're using, how you control those his uh, shoulders and, and arms in this particular case. Okay, so I'm going to catch inside the grip because I'm turning that way. Right. And we catch underneath the armpit. It's a really good thing to use if you can't break a grip. Okay, come through and catch there. And now he thinks he's still winning. We come back through, catch, and over he goes. And it is such an odd side throw. That's what we call it the odd side Sayanagi because he doesn't think he's going to be falling in that direction. He's used to going over that way, not this way. Yes, yes, especially because of your, your action. So one more time and then we'll, uh, we'll go on to something else. It depends on the situation. It really depends. You can use any type of a grip setup you want, but ultimately he wants to get his hands in the, in the way he's doing. He may have a lapel to start. Yeah, anything. So it works just as well from here. If you can't get the grip right, you come out behind her and the pass right there. And as we come through, boom, right there. Remember, I'm not bending my, my wrist again. It's just like we're doing a morote. Keep that like you're holding up a platter. Turn and look behind you again. And over he goes. Okay, we still have our grips. My elbow's still in a safe position, so it's my wrist. Show that one again. Yep. So he's got a good grip. I can't get loose. Come up underneath. Okay. It, it's a little bit easier to take a step to the side and then swing in. Okay, notice again my elbow is pointed sideways. I keep trying to be behind me and rotate up. That's what we call an odd side knee drop sayonagi because you're coming the opposite side one normally expects into a knee drop sayonagi. Just come in, don't throw him, just a basic Yippon sayonagi knee drop style. So if he comes in, there's your knee drop sayonagi, right? Okay, okay, that's it. Now let's look at the difference. He's coming in the other direction. He's rolling the other way, as you can see. Show that second variation, which some of the guys, the looks on their face, they like that as well. Okay. Grab a hold of his lapel. I'm sorry, his lapel. His sleeve down next to his wrist. Come up underneath his armpit and catch the near side lapel. All right. Okay, we're gonna step across. You drive your elbow through. See how we still have a hold of, of his sleeve. Okay. Turn and look behind you. Rotate through. This. We're in here, we're in here, we're low. 
but we're going to do it standing so that he doesn't have a chance to reach out and catch himself. Guys, look how he swings in. Now look how deep his left hip gets in. See that? And he can just pick him up and roll him from that point there. There you go. So it's a standing variation of that odd side knee drop Sayanagi. This case is a low squat we were practicing earlier tonight. Remember that one? There you go. Okay? You want to When I cook again, he may pull his arm away, and it pops it free like, oh, I lost his arm. Well, I can still save his throw. And so when he when did, I can, as long as I keep coming in, and I can spin and turn. He comes in, he comes in, and there he just catches a spin. Yeah.